Is there a digital storage oscilloscope gathering dust somewhere in your shop? You know, an automotive scope can be a very powerful diagnostic tool in the hands of someone who knows how to use it. The first thing you got to do is blow the dust off and power it up. And I hope you'll do just that after watching this edition of The Trainer. Diagnostic uses of the lab scope are only limited by the imagination and skill of its user. With some accessories, the scope can also be used to view current, pressure, vacuum, and more. And like any other skill you've mastered, it all starts with some fundamental knowledge and practice actually using the tool on cars that you know are okay. Any tests you currently perform with your DVOM can be performed with a scope. Think of the scope as a multimeter on steroids able to provide you with a visual display of what is happening in the circuit or component you are testing. Let's try a simple example. How about a simple battery charging system test? Now we've demonstrated how to test the battery starting charging system using the multimeter in another video, so I won't go into too much detail uh, in this one. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it on the voltage scale. I'm gonna connect it to the battery positive to positive course, negative to negative. I'm going to set the record button. And then I'm going to go in and start the car a couple of times, finally let it run for a minute or two before shutting it off. Now when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit the record function. That's going to give me the maximum reading. In this case, it's 13.7 with the lights on. That's not too bad for a charging system. That's charging system voltage, isn't it? Hit it one more time. Now that's the minimum reading that the multimeter took care of. It's reading 9.8 volts. That's above the 9.5 for a loaded battery test, isn't it? That's the loaded voltage. And then finally, when I go ahead and clear the record function, I'm gonna get the open circuit voltage, the current state of charge on the battery itself. Now that gives me a really rough overview of the charging system, but let's see what difference the scope makes. I'm going to use one channel to connect to the battery the same way I did with the multimeter. I'm also going to take advantage of the additional inputs and use a second channel to record amperage. That's not cheating, that's just taking advantage of what the tool can do. Now let's start the car and let it run for a few minutes. The resulting graph or waveform tells me everything the multimeter did and more. I can see, for example, when the starter solenoid contacts actually closed and the current it took to make that happen. I can see if there's a problem with the alternator diodes by zooming in on the voltage line and looking for the telltale signs of ripple. I know how much net current is being put back into the system and more, all in the same amount of time it took to use the DVOM. Now a couple distinct advantages come to mind when I talk about the scope. The scope samples many times faster than your multimeter can and it does so over a given period of time which it can then display here on the screen. The multimeter is giving me little snippets, little windows in time if you will. Uh, that's going to make it a lot harder to catch any anomalies that might be going on with the circuit that I'm testing. Now no big deal if I'm checking something like the battery starting charging systems where things aren't changing that fast. But what if I want to check a faster signal, like a cam or crank sensor? Then it can make a difference, can it? Let's find out. I'm accessing the cam sensor right at the computer, using back probe pins to avoid damaging the wiring. Any ECM input I want to check, I can check here. Now let's see what the cam sensor and crank sensor output looks like 
on the scope. Now let's see what a cam and crank sensor signal look like using the same settings that we use for the battery starting charging system. Okay, this is turning into just one long smear, isn't it? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the voltage divisions are along the vertical axis, or the x-axis. The time divisions are along the horizontal axis. Uh, axis. So by changing that time division, I can take a closer look and open up the pattern. So let's go from 10 seconds for each division to 20 milliseconds for each division. Now that's a substantial difference. What else can I tell using this waveform? Well, if I have a known good pattern, I can tell if the two signals are in sync with one another. It beats tearing things down to find out, doesn't it? And saves a lot of time in the process. Now here's another example of how a scope can save you time. It's called the relative compression test. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the overall mechanical condition of the engine by monitoring the starter current draw of each individual cylinder. That's right, we're going to use the time settings so that we can home in and look at how much current each cylinder is drawing, or causing to be drawn, I should say, uh, as it goes through its compression stroke. Now, of course, anytime we make a motor work harder, it takes more current flow, doesn't it? So a good, healthy cylinder ought to make that starter work good and hard. If the cylinder is not so good, it should show as a lower current demand in that pattern. So I've got the starter current, uh, or the current probe, high amp probe, still connected to the uh, battery cable. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Each hump is a cylinder as it passes through top dead center of its compression stroke. The amount of current drawn by any electric motor is not only a factor of its internal resistance, but the amount of physical resistance it's trying to overcome. Healthy cylinders will take more current to rotate through than a weak one, and we'll see that here. Talk about doing a compression test quick. Do you need a big expensive scope to do a relative compression test? Not at all. Uh, there are scopes in the marketplace across the price range, uh, with across different feature offerings. And heck, if you have a high scale scan tool in your shop, you may already have a, a scope there and didn't even know it. Uh, here's one example of a product on the market. This is the little AES U scope. It's a little one channel, uh, pocket size lab scope, very powerful little scope. Uh, let's try the relative compression test using this. And take a look at that. Now what if I did see a problem with that pattern? What if one of the peaks was lower than it should be? I don't know which cylinder it is, do I? Well that's easy enough to find out with a scope. I'm going to use another channel of the scope and find a reference that I can use to help me see where I'm at in relation to those peaks. Now we can do that very easily using the ignition event. Hook up to the ignition system, doesn't really matter which cylinder you pick, whatever's the easiest one to get to. That will then show up on the pattern as your reference, and if there's a problem, say, two peaks down the road, use the firing order to find out exactly which peak is causing the issue. To get a reference, I'm going to use the igniter event on this number one coil. That should give me a good reference. Warning, scopes have a limit to the voltage input that they can handle. Attenuators are needed to safely measure voltages that are higher than this limit, so be sure to check your scope's owner's manual before you connect the high voltage components like ignition coils and fuel injectors. Now to make the pattern more stable, I'm going to go ahead and add a trigger. A trigger is just a point on the screen that you tell the scope when to start tracing the pattern. So in this case, we're going to just make this trigger point here and set it so it captures on a single capture. And we should be all set to go. Okay. 
Now I know what cylinder goes with what peak. What else can I learn from this waveform? Take a look, think about it. Did you say timing? Sure, if the timing were off, wouldn't that reference line be further away from the peak one way or the other? And I didn't even need a known good pattern to compare it to, did I? Well, these are just a few examples of how a scope can help you speed up your diagnostic process, help you find those tricky diagnostic problems more quickly and more efficiently. And I hope you've also seen that a scope is not as complicated to operate as you might have thought. So I hope you take the time to blow the dust off the one in your shop and give it a try. And don't sweat it. If you need help, we have lots of resources on the AutoPro Workshop and the MotorAge.com website. And you can also ask questions in the comment section of this video. Well, that's all the time I've got for this month's edition of The Trainer. I'll see you next month.